Hello, I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House. So in our previous tiny house video, we built the gable end truss for our tiny house. Well today, we're going to be making scissor trusses. Now scissor trusses give us a little bit more headroom because the bottom piece is raised up. So let's get started. I'm going to be using eight foot boards for our uh, top pieces here. And our first task will be to find out the pitch of the roof. And to do that, we're going to be using a speed square. The pitch that I'm using for our roof is a 512. So I've placed the pivot point of the speed square on the end of the board. And you'll see on this common side, there's a 5. Turn your speed square until that matches up with the edge. Hold tight and that right there will give us a 512 pitch. We'll need two of these. As I make each cut, the dog and I will lay them out for you so you can see where these go. So these are our top pieces here and they will butt up against each other like that. Now I'm no speed square professional but I have found that for the second uh, set of boards you can use this uh, top cuts value and line that up to five and so it's kind of like three and a half or so. And that will be our next cut. We'll need two of these again. So these two boards are the next layer here. So for now we're just going to set those down below. Like that. This next board is a little bit tricky. And I've not mastered it yet, but we'll give it a try. First of all, I'm going to mark out one foot. Okay. Next, we've got to find the uh, center of our board. So on your speed square, there is uh, these numbers here. And uh, I'm going to go at an inch and a half here and mark out, I'm uh, sorry, inch and three fourths and mark uh, the center. So I can just hold my pencil down and slide this back and forth and find the center of the board. So I'm sure there's a super easy way to find this angle right here. Um, but I don't have a miter saw, so I'm going to use a piece of paper plate, very low tech here, and uh, make sure our top pieces are very well aligned, and just use a pencil to make a template of that angle. And now with this highly precise template, I just mark the general lines of where this middle cut's gonna go. Pretty, huh? All right. Uh, with a miter saw, it'd be easy to just chop these, but I don't have one of those. And now I just cut this at the one foot mark we made earlier. Okay, this piece will go up here between our two top boards. Our next two boards will be fairly basic cuts. We need two 18 and a half inch boards. So, and a half. Two of these. So 
these two 18 and a half inch boards are going to be placed in here. Our last two boards have some uh, different cuts on them. The first one is to put a four and a half angle on here. And now for another less than technical approach, I'm going to take my board and set it here so I'm not a professional with a speed square, and uh, a problem I just ran into is I had written down that I used to do a four and a half for top cut, but it's actually uh, a common. So let's try that again. Makes a big difference. All right, that's better. Now for our very non-technical measurement here, I'm gonna just hold our board to where it needs to go and then put a little mark here on both sides to go by. Now I know that with the two marks we just made it should come out to be roughly two and three-fourths on our speed square and that's what it is down here so Mark that. And we'll cut that out. Very nice. Now you may notice that I have uh, two of them, two trusses here now. And that is to use as a template because you really don't want uh, variation in height between uh, trusses. So that will help us to uh, maintain consistency. Only two cuts to go. Now these are also very not technical, and they probably should be, but I don't know how to do it. So what I like to do is match up our boards. Make sure everything is where it should be. Then, I take my pencil, oops, and just run along here. And make that line. And that's what we're going to be using to uh, cut out this last piece. Let's check the accuracy of that line by using the template from my previous build. Very, very close. So that line is exactly what we need. Well, you might have noticed that I have put our current truss on top of my template truss. And that's very important because you don't really want any variation in height uh, between trusses. So that's why I have it on top of this other one. I apologize for the low light setting all of a sudden. The last step to do once all the uh, wood is laid out is to use these mending plates to um, put on the frame here and then you use uh, nails which I've got um, one and a quarter inch um, roofing nails that'll go in here and um, put these down so let's start doing that. I like to make sure the plate is right in the middle and they just tack a couple of nails down and make sure everything is uh, in place before I drive it all the way down. And once everything is in place, then you can start putting in more nails. Now with a couple of nails in the top piece to hold that in place, I'm gonna move over here 
Ooh, that's very dark, isn't it? And I'm going to attach uh, a plate to this end to really start getting this thing tied together. I apologize for how terribly dark this video is. I did not expect to be uh, staying out this late, but I am, so might as well make the most out of it. So I'm just going to hold these tight uh, whenever I put these nails in. I found a light. That's going to help us out a lot. This is the, uh, the bottom middle piece. And it's kind of tricky. I can see my uh, cut here was poor. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try and get it lined up so that they can put at least three good nails in every section. Once you get the second plate on, things really start to uh, come together nicely. And when I mean by second, I mean the back side. The bottom section down here only has one board connecting to another board, obviously. <laughs> so I'm going to use uh, this smaller mending plate to hold it down here. Okay, now the last place we have to join together is going to be here. And uh, I'm going to use a larger mending plate here. And uh, it's going to be at an angle so that I can get all three of these pieces here. So about like that. Okay, so I'm going to put nails in all the rest of these and make sure they're real strong and we'll flip it over and do the exact same thing. Okay, each of the plates now has lots of nails put in them. So I'm going to carefully lift this from the center and then flip this over so that plates can be put on the back side. I'm probably going to remove that bottom truss to make this flat on the ground. I got all the uh, nails in the other side, which means it's done now. And uh, it's very strong. So, uh, I know you can't really see it because it's so dark, but um, you'll get to see it pretty good whenever I install these. Well, that concludes the build of a scissor truss. I've got to have a total of five of these plus the two gable ends. So I um, have to make about two more of these, I believe, before I'm done. Now, I know that these nighttime builds and videos aren't exactly ideal because it's so dark, but I don't have a lot of time, so it'll have to do. Well, thanks for watching this video. I uh, can't wait to uh, get all of these installed and get my roof on the tiny house because bad weather is on its way. I'm Seth Johnson with Land House and I will see you next time. Bye. Flip it over here. All right.